Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to present this uh, conflicting and controversial uh, topic. So um, uh, my topic, uh, as you can see, is vertebral artery injury in cervical spine trauma diagnosis and management. So I will start my uh, presentation with asking our uh, audience, colleague uh, spine surgeons, how many of you screen cervical dislocation for vertebral artery injury? Few hands. Okay, that's expected. I am actually part of the people who are not screening. Okay, so my lecture plan will go through this introduction, anatomy, diagnosis, uh, and screening, management, conclusion, and some of the references. So as introduction, um, I will use BCVI to represent plant cerebrovascular injury. It composes two entities, which is injury to the coronaries, uh, to the uh, carotids and to the, uh, to the vertebral uh, artery. And actually, main concentration will be as a spine surgeon to the, onto the vertebral artery injuries. And it is increasingly detected in tra traumatic settings due to the improvement in the uh, diagnostic uh, imaging. And the incidence thought to be 0.5 percent, and uh, most of the patients are asymptomatic, and uh, variable presentations for symptomatic patients from stroke up to the death. So mortality rates uh, in literature 8 to 18 percent, and uh, they can be subclassified to uh, spontaneous and traumatic. So 70 percent of traumatic have associated fractures, and it will click into your mind whenever you see a patient with dislocation and there is a fracture which involves the foramen and fractures which are at the level of C1, C3. To make you more aware that you should screen these cases for possibility of, uh, of uh, vertebral artery injuries and there are different subtypes of vertebral artery injuries. So uh, it has been also suggested that screening, screening protocol should be established in at-risk patients, which we have mentioned. However, uh, there remains significant debate regarding who is at risk for uh, traumatic vertebral artery injury and the imaging modalities as a screening tool. So there remains significant debate regarding who is at risk. And uh, I mean, in the American um, the College of Surgeons published recently the ninth editions of Advanced Trauma Life Support Manual, which proposed the criteria for uh, investigation for such cases. And in this presentation, our goal will go into the evaluation of the existing evidence and literature uh, in regards to this uh, entity of uh, vertebral artery injuries. I'll take you through uh, simple slides onto the anatomy of the vertebral artery and I can say that uh, left, as you know, vertebral artery is the dominant in 70% of, uh, of the patients, and there is up to 10% unilateral hypoplasia. And you can see on this diagram also there are four, uh, four segments. Well, our main interest on the uh, V2, which is the foraminal segment, and uh, you know the, the vertebral artery arises from the subclavian and it goes between this uh, scalenus anterior and uh, col uh, um, uh, longus coli and it bears it goes to the f uh, up to this uh, c6 foramen it's considered to be v1 and from c6 to c1 it's considered to be a v2 and it is the main uh, level of injury in our uh, uh, cases at v3 it goes from c1 foramen uh, and it goes uh, kephalad and uh, v ventral to bears the, the dura and goes intradural as uh, V4. And uh, in, for example, uh, I can show you this case uh, of uh, unifacet uh, dislocation of uh, C5-6. You can see there is a fracture on the uh, foramen with a fragment into the foramen transversarium, which might click the possibility of, uh, of uh, of uh, vertebral artery injury. It's a very busy slide, and just quote some of the literatures with different authors, which uh, according to the type of the injury, whether it's dislocation or 
fracture into the foramen or, uh, sub, uh, or C1, C3 injury, and its correlation with the possibility of, uh, of uh, vertebral artery injury. And you can you see in the last parent, they quoted lateral dislocation of CC spine has 100% uh, chance of vertebral artery injury of variable uh, magnitude. So how do we screen uh, such patients? So uh, clinical symptoms of vertebral artery may be attributed to the ischemia complications, and that will lead to the variable presentation of such patients varying from only headache, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, up to the uh, gait disturbances and uh, neurological uh, weakness. Uh, a significant proportion of patients are symptomatic as demonstrated by Biffel and Cuthrin, and more recently by Jacobson. So some may present with delayed neurological symptoms, and that's why maybe uh, some of our uh, colleagues here will claim that we have, uh, we have not been regularly screening our uh, cervical trauma, and still we don't have any uh, problems with our patients. But actually when you start screening, you will find maybe most of these patients are having some degree of the injury, but still they are asymptomatic. So the recommendation do not extend to the choice of imaging modalities of the uh, blunt cervical cerebrovascular injuries, but do allude to the use of CTA, which is computed tomography angiography. So I'll go through uh, different modalities of um, uh, screening and uh, in com comparing each type, subtype, uh, each type of these modalities. And uh, according to availability in your institute, you can choose uh, any one of these. So uh, first of all is uh, DSA, which considered earlier the gold standard modality, and it carries risk of iatrogenic injury and of one to 2% of stroke as well as is being expensive, and I think most uh, of the institutes, they don't have um, such, uh, such modality. And uh, due to the possible risk of iatrogenic um, complications and lack of availability into each institution and the cost, maybe it's not, uh, and it's also invasive, it's not the, our choice of uh, modality. Doublex uh, Doppler ultrasound uh, depends on the availability of the um, operator of such device because the interpretation will, will depend on that. So it was claimed to be having poor sensitivity of 38% when uh, choose to detect the uh, plant cere cerebrovascular uh, injuries. So MRA uh, has, been, has gained favor as it's, it's non-invasive and doesn't require the administration of contrast. Uh, it's also diffusion uh, weighted sequence may allow for rapid identification of cerebral ischemia. And uh, unfortunately the studies which use MRA compared to DSA for diagnosis demonstrated lower sensitivity 47 to 75%. It was uh, felt that uh, MRA failed to detect low grade injuries in these studies. So this coupled with the lack of rapid availability at many institutions along long scan times and potential artifact with orthopedic uh, implants marks MRA as suboptimal uh, recommendation for screening of such injuries. So we we'll reach to the uh, may, maybe the most available and most handy, uh, most easy to use uh, modality which is CTA. So it's, it's maybe earlier it was considered to be a poor uh, sensitivity and specificity, but the ray, rays of the modalities and kind of um, uh, resolution of CT scanners improved its sensitivity and sensitivity and specificity. So Bern et al. screened 435 patients for uh, these injuries and they reported 1.2% which is comparable with the studies involving screening with DSA. So no patients with negative scans subsequently developed adverse neurological symptoms on their study. Similarly, Biffle et al. found that 16 slice CTA did not miss any clinically relevant cases of such injuries. 
and a comparative study by Eastman utilized 16 slides CTA and DSA to screen a group of 163, 162 uh, of at-risk patients. The results were concordant in 98% of cases. CTA produced a single false negative in a low-grade vertebral artery injury that ultimately required no intervention. Uh, the sensitivity and specificity and positive predictive value on their study uh, of were 97.7 and 100%, 100% and 93% uh, respectively. So uh, in their uh, prospective study of 158, Goodwin reported a lower sensitivity of 41, but a compared specificity of 97 when combining both 16 slide CTA and 64 slice CTA. And this study was uh, performed uh, close to the time of injury, whereas DSA occurred only uh, due to non-availability after 24 to 48 hours. And uh, CTA was not accurate as DSA, but did acknowledge that the delay in performing uh, DSA may have allowed for evolution of this injury. So interpretation of CTA may also rely on accurate radiological interpretation. And uh, the authors alluded to a high false uh, negative rate in the first half of the study, which they attributed to the learning curve of the reporting radiologist. So a meta, a meta analysis by Roberts suggests a variability on the diagnostic performance uh, across the studies due to the variation in diagnostic threshold uh, set by the individual trauma centers. So also DSA remains the gold standard, imaging modality for screening patients with suspected uh, blunt cere cerebrovascular injuries. CTA is more accessible option in many institutions and may be more cost effective. CTA also is non-invasive and may allow for concurrent imaging of other injuries and has benefited from improved accuracy with the advancement of CT technology. So just comparison uh, uh, between the modalities, duplex magnetic and CTA. And, uh, and uh, for the treatment, we have um, just subclassification of the injuries. A grade one is luminal, grade two dissection, grade three is uh, pseudoaneurysm, grade four occlusion, and the worst is the transection which has almost 100% of uh, mortality. So there is uh, no level one study comparing treatment modality uh, for uh, uh, blunt cerebrovascular injuries. Um, optimal treatment is therefore is a source of controversy and most of the treatment is decided based on multidisciplinary uh, guidance. So. Calcut multi uh, retrospective study suggested early pharmacological treatment uh, in percentage of hemorrhagic and neurological injury. Absolute contraindication may include uh, uh, may include those with uncontrolled hemorrhage of any source. Caution must be advi advised in the presence of polytrauma patients without hemorrhage who may develop coagulopathy as well. So anticoagulant is a safe uh, treatment option for stage one, a grade one and grade two kind of injuries and there is variation on literature between choosing the type of, uh, anti between heparin then converting to warfarin or just aspirin and, um, uh, and uh, clobidogrel. So also we'll touch on to the endovascular therapy. Uh, it depends on the availability for, uh, for, for uh, the types of three and four uh, of this uh, treatment. So maybe warranted when antithrombotic is contraindicated because of patients with potential bleeding and the presence of collateral circulation site and grade will determine the endovascular treatment utilized. So options include stenting of the vertebral artery or coil uh, embolization. So also um, some authors have reported significant complication rate associated with endovascular uh, therapy. So um, in terms of surgery, actually there is not much evidence on literature. In terms of uh, blunt cerebrovascular injuries, if the concentration goes into the carotid injuries, there's a lot, but in terms of vertebral artery injuries, uh, the indication is limited to the 
uh, uh, dissection type or uncontrolled bleeding. So also some uh, people advocate for serial re-imaging to assess the type of uh, evolution of the injury uh, from, from uh, different uh, types. In conclusion, uh, all physicians managing uh, trauma patients should be aware of uh, traumatic vertebral artery injury and have a low threshold for screening and the presence of risk factors. Patients with uh, symptoms related to the posterior circulation should have been warranted for further investigation with, with uh, one of these modalities based on the availabilities. Once it's diagnosed, early treatment is recommended to avoid neurological complication with early involvement of the regional spinal unit. A multidisciplinary approach, as we said, which involves the spinal surgeon, vascular surgeon, interventional radiologist, stroke physician, and hematologist might help on planning uh, such cases. So we recommend all trauma units impl to implement a local screening protocol for uh, case-based uh, case uh, uh, individuals. So thank you for your listening, and I wish to hear from thank whether you. anybody is going to change his opinion after yeah. this uh, presentation. Or Thank you very much, Dr. Khalifa. Uh, I would like from uh, Dr. Uh, Patrick, uh, Dr. Abdelaziz, and uh, Dr.